Call the meeting to order at 628. Um, quick preface, I have never chaired a meeting before, so be gentle. Uh, <laughs> um, so we'll start, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from October 22nd meeting, 2018. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the meeting on October 22nd of 2019, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Um, I'll entertain a motion to take the agenda out of order and start with members of the public. So moved. Second. Um, all those in favor of taking the agenda out of order and starting with members of the public, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. So we have um, three lovely people from the BDCC to talk about uh, programs and activities for community development, if I am reading this correctly. Yes. Yes. I'm going to hand out several dead trees. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, and I'll start talking to you about our programs. I'm going to cut it a little short. I don't know how long you want to give us. We can go for hours. We can go for 10 minutes. We can go for hours. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll kind of curtail a little bit so that we can get to um, Bob and Christie's program um, no, pretty quickly. Again. So BDCC is the Regional <coughs> Development Corporation for Wyndham County. There are 13 of those in the state. Sevens is a separate regional board Thank that thinks about and puts together long-term regional strategies for growing the economy. Okay, and completes what's called a SETS. It's a federally recognized plan, a comprehensive economic development strategy. So SEVENS leads with vision and strategy, and BDCC implements with programs. Okay. So <clears throat> SEVENS has no staff, BDCC has all of the staff. Uh, and so all of the programs that you'll hear about tonight are programs from BDCC, many inspired by strategies of SEVENS. So uh, we have been working, we've just recently completed our second SEDS, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy. This time, uh, the first one was completed in 2014. It's a five-year plan. It was for just Wyndham County. This was just completed and it was a five-year plan. And it's for all the towns that are in the Southern Vermont Economic Development Zone. That is Wyndham and Bennington counties. That's a special delegation in Vermont state statute um, <coughs> that was put in place uh, because this area was really struggling economically mm -hmm. with several different factors. So we put together that plan. Then what happens is we our boards look at that and you know where where is their traction? Where are their partners that we can work with throughout the region? And let's start building programs. So with our first sense. Uh, one of the largest priorities was to increase the size and quality of the workforce. What we've seen here in the region, and really in most of rural Vermont and, and much of rural America, is a decrease in population and specifically a decrease in the working age population. Okay, So that is becoming more and more acute and we can see um, you know, a lot of our employers are challenged to <coughs> probably staff. That can inhibit growth, it can inhibit um, businesses coming here, um, and it's, and it's we, we, we're almost at full unemployment. So it's not a matter of, you know, we've got a bunch of lazy folks that aren't working. It's, we literally don't have um, the people that are here. So we have a number of strategies that we're working on to <coughs> address that. Retention is one, um, which is Bob and Christy can talk a lot about um, and we'll talk a lot about shortly. Uh, training and retraining for the job, you know, jobs in the new um, new economy, uh, helping people seek employment as as uh, <coughs> we're seeing a lot of technological innovation in the economy, and then also recruitment. Um, recruitment is probably our latest effort at this point, but that'll be changing soon. So we have a number of other different strategies that I would love to talk about, but. We were lucky enough to get Bob to join us tonight. So I'd like to start with um, Christy, who will talk a little bit about her program. And your high school is actually um, 
they are the winner in terms the winner. of uh, <laughs> implementing and helping us really get this program off the ground. So, well, hi, I'm Chris Brady. Um, my title is Pipelines and Pathways Coordinator. Um, this is my second year of being at the BDCC, just the beginning of it. Um, I was hired under several grants to um, essentially work within all of the four Wyndham County High Schools to develop career awareness and preparedness programming um, and really connect students to um, opportunities that are right here in their own backyard. So um, I have been working closely with Leland and Gray to develop strategies for um, sort of this happiness problem and we've done a lot so far. I mean, we sp I spent a year kind of gathering information, developing a plan, developing relationships and then we've launched the activities portion this fall. So a lot of the things we've done are, you know, 21st century soft skills, which are things that employers have identified as something that's really important and something that the um, entry level employees are not coming onto the job with. So things like understanding punctuality, mm -hmm. understanding how to dress appropriately, mm -hmm. speak professionally. Um, and then, you know, even, even bigger 21st century soft skills like conflict resolution, um, teamwork, time management, those kinds of things. So we've been working a lot on the soft skills portion, um, also career development portion, so making sure that everybody has a, a resume and a cover letter, which is surprisingly something that doesn't happen with most high school students, mm -hmm. um, and that uh, they're ready for an interview, either for college or for an entry-level career, and we'll be conducting mock interviews with um, some of the teachers and some of the professionals from outside um, in December so that kids can really get a sense of what it's like to be in that very scary interview environment. So um, one thing that I would just add before you go to Bob mm -hmm. is um, this program is in all four of the public high schools in Wyndham County. Mm -hmm. And uh, kids cannot take advantage or plan for opportunities that they don't know exist. And unfortunately, you know, I have seen I mean, people do not understand that there are jobs here, particularly the more removed you are from the employment centers like Brattleboro and Bellows Falls. I was at a school board meeting in one of our middle schools in the county with the Secretary of Education who asked that board, you know, what do you tell your students about the opportunities that are here? What are they training for? And long-term school board member said, there are no opportunities for our kids here. <laughs> And we tell them they're going to need to leave. And, you know, that's absolutely not true. They may want to leave. <laughs> they may have opportunities that they want to pursue outside of the area. But we absolutely have opportunities here for kids. And so this program is to help them understand what those are and how you can access them. And I, and I think a really important sort of piggyback on that important uh, point is, you know, I was at Galbraith Union High School the other day talking to the department heads. And we talked about their core subject matter and the things that they're teaching with regard to career education already, and there are a lot of things. Um, but we, you know, we started to mention businesses, and we said, how many of you know what uh, Omega Optical is? You know, chirping, right? How many of you have heard of Sir Sosimo Lumber? And these are organizations that have come to us directly and said, we need employees, and we're willing to be flexible around scheduling of younger people. We're willing to, be, to train these folks Right? So the educators need to know this too because they're the ones that are directly interfacing with the students every day and can say, oh, this science student actually would be a perfect match for a position in Omega Optical. Maybe they can get an entry level position or maybe they need to go to school, but they, have, they know that they can come back here and have a successful career. So, mm -hmm. exactly right. So I'm just going to have yeah. Bob just talk a little bit about what we've been doing at Newland and Brain. So we have a couple of multi pronged approach, I think, to this. Um, and uh, some of it was pre-existing before we started this relationship, and some of it, and that's, that work has been really amplified since this relationship has happened. And there's been some new stuff too. So just a quick thing, you guys may be familiar with our co-op program, which is a work-based learning program where we have students go out and work in the field, um, and they do it locally, and you think, well, how do we find matches for these kids? We're talking probably 20 to 25 a semester. Mm -hmm. We find placements for all of them, um, obviously the hospital, mm -hmm. Towns Elementary School, local mechanics, um, to make a cottage shop, like all these local businesses uh, for us that, that our kids, that take our kids in and work with them. Um, part of the classwork component of that is when they come back into the building one day a week, 
they're meeting with our work-based learning coordinator, Terry, and they're also doing stuff with Christy that she's describing, the resume building, the interview skills, all those kind of things happen in that one classroom day. The other, the other days they're out in the field. Um, so that, that program has been really improved since, since this relationship has begun. Um, a new element that we've done, the idea of like finding out where the jobs are, what a, just get people familiar with it is we, did, we organized a, um, the day that PSATs were happening for our sophomores, we had seniors doing another assessment, we sent our freshmen on buses to Brattleboro, um, to in groups of two to go look at four different businesses, two businesses each, they had full tours of the, of the facilities um, by the people that run them. Um, our staff went along obviously to chaperones, but also to like learn themselves a little bit about it. And that's the concept that we're expanding, all paid for by BDCC, the transportation to do that. We didn't have to pay a nickel from local budget to do any of that. So it's good exposure for our kids and our staff. So that's one outreach thing I think we're doing to create that initial uh, piece. Um, the other thing that sort of, and Christy has done, has inspired a lot of us to do some thinking around, around the career piece. You know, the traditional high school setting, I think we all think about, well, we're placing kids in colleges, and let's list those good colleges that kids go to, and that's awesome, and we should continue to do that. However, a lot of our kids don't go to college. We have probably half of our kids don't, don't leave and, and stay here and work. And it struck me that we are, we're here really harping on where those kids go to school, but we never talk about the kids who's, who don't go. What are they doing? And so it, it occurred to me that one of the things that we really should do is we should have a 100% placement record. Every, I mean, we're small enough. We graduated 45 kids last year. We should be able to account for it where all 45 of those kids go. Mm -hmm. They're not in college, they're not accepted, and they're not you know, matriculating somewhere, that they have a full-time job that they're going to that we are making sure we're, we're, we're providing that support for them on the process to get them the interview skills, the tours, job shadows, whatever it's going to take to get them placed in, in whatever place they want to be. That's a great goal. So our goal Definitely. for this year's graduating class is year one, 100% placement. Oh. We know where every kid's going. So that's one element, and then so the extension of that, and we had some um, board discussions of our own last year that had some board members asking us about the financial literacy types of things, and trying to figure out how, where, where are kids getting that these days, and so kids don't know how to do anything. And uh, so we, some of you guys, if you've been around these parts for a while, you may recall Charlie Marchant in the senior survival class. Any, any participants? No? Uh, all right. Well, back in the day. There was a course that we learned there required you to graduate called Senior Survival, and it had a whole range of things to it. I won't go into all the details. It included sewing, orienteering, and tire changing, and all these things that real world stuff that you had to know how to do. Well, we're going to be bringing that back. It's been 25 years since it's been in place. We're bringing it back, and that, that's going to my, my board um, very soon for them to approve that policy of that being a requirement. And the idea is that we are going to bring in people who are going to do the job side of things. So not just the kids who do the work-based learning and the co-ops, but every senior will go through this program. We're going to have all of the job placement stuff. So getting a job, keeping a job, managing the money you get from the job, and then like what we're calling adulthood factors, like other things you just need to know. Life to do skills. Yeah. Right, just those skills. Yeah. You know, but, all the, but we're partnering with local businesses as well to do this, I think uh, it was which bank it was. It was People's Bank that came in and did a, a financial literacy thing with our kids from the co-op program. Mm -hmm. And kids were just like, whoa, wait, what's an LLC? How do, how do I, if I'm a small, what do I do? And so thinking about how we're going to do that. And, and so that's on the plan to do for next year's class. So we're adding to that program as well. And these guys will have an integral part in helping us run that, bringing in speakers, providing tours, all the kinds of things that we're doing. And we really have to do a reality fair in the spring. Absolutely. Well, there's going to be a capstone project that all these kids will have that will lead to like where what they're doing, and it's going to be sort of this culmination of now seven years of the learning grade from sixth grade on up. As they plan do all their career exploration stuff along the way, they'll end up with an idea of what they want to do, and they'll have this opportunity to put this, get this capstone at the end. So that's what we're doing, and um, we're pretty excited about that piece of it, and, and really just embracing these guys in the process because of what they can do and provide for us and the, the networking that. We're busy educating, but these guys have the connections. And so for us, it's really about, you know, getting, getting them up the valley here and connecting us with other people. So. Yeah, and it's been a, a great, great partnership, as Laura was saying. I mean, they really are leading the pack of all the Wyndham County Schools. Sorry, other 
schools. Um, <laughs> and they really have, have you know, latched onto this idea and taken the ball and run with it. Um, so we've been able to, you know, hit the ground running in September, whereas, you know, some other places we've had to, you know, it's taken a little bit longer. So it's really exciting and just to have people who are open to the concept of career education being a priority. Um, really means yeah. a lot to us. And then the final step that we'll hit at some point, we're going to get there, is as you guys may have heard from Honest, I'm moving to proficiency-based graduation, where instead of <clears throat> earning credits in certain subjects to graduate, you have to demonstrate proficiency in those areas. Mm -hmm. And it's really a different way of thinking about it, but the idea is, can I learn proficiency in communication rather than sitting in an English class and reading Shakespeare, can I demonstrate that in a different way? Is there a connection I can have in a workforce place where I might be able to show my proficiency in just a different setting. Still learn the same diploma, but really put it on a track where I really want to go. So thinking about that's sort of the next step, and that's maybe a year away, and thinking about how we, how we broach those, but if kids maybe can earn those credits through outside placements, through job experiences, co-ops, whatever. That's um, so that's, that's, that's kind of the future, great. that's what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff for the public yeah. education. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I will go through, can I go through, how much more time do you want us to have? Go ahead, give me a box. Ten minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> you don't have to stay for that. We do have a number of other um, adult training programs we go in and work with, helping, um, you know, existing workforce upskill um, training. We do have targeted expertise recruitment program. Um, that is kind of being piloted out of our office, so looking for specialty positions, hard to fill positions, working one on one with employers. Um, those are emerging programs. Um, I'm trying to think of any other workforce. Oh, we have a paid internship yeah, program, uh, which has really, for a number of close, close to 50%, turned into really a supported pre-employment program. Mm -hmm. So those are, uh, those can be students from anywhere, but they're women county employers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, women county students or students from away coming in and we have them with this paid internship, um, as well as young professionals. Mm -hmm. um, so keeping, uh, creating a space for people under 40 to mm -hmm. um, interact professionally, socially, mm -hmm. um, Alex that we work with says, you know, if you have a job and no friends, um, what, how does it go? I, I don't know, oh, but, no, I, no, I'm not but I say. agree. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you have yeah. a job and no friends, you're not going to hang out here. I mean, right? right. You're going to yeah. end up leaving yeah. after friends like, and no a jobs. robust social right. life doesn't work. Yeah. So yeah. how do we kind That's of make really those two things come together? Um, other big pieces of other big programs that we are tackling. So in your folder, you'll see a number of programs around entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and small businesses, um, helping businesses plan for um, secession, you know, so if your folks are retiring, you know, how do we keep that business open? How do we hand it on to the next person? If you have an idea and you want to start up, um, you know, if you're looking to expand, um, if you're encountering a, a bump, you know, like how we can provide services to help uh, with those things. Um, but we're on the office now thinking about, we do a lot of, um, BDCC does a lot of uh, also large scale project development for some of our employers. Um, we've done large projects with Jeans Precision, Chroma, others, um, to help them expand and keep those jobs here. Um, we, in addition, so with our, uh, we have the Southern Vermont Economy Project, which was a USDA-funded project. Um, that ended last year, but it's going to come back again this year. Um, that is looking to build capacity regionally. So amongst our small towns, our small organizations, who often are facing many of the same challenges. So is there technical assistance that we can provide for Townsend that is relevant in New Fane and Jamaica and you know Guilford. Um, some examples of that are definitely connectivity. We've had a couple of connectivity summits, um, bringing folks together to hear different information about how you can expand, what programs are available for financing. Um, we also have done. Has anybody been to the Southern Vermont Economy Summit? Mm -hmm. So that takes place in May. Um, this year is the fourth annual I think yes. and it's literally for Southern Vermont there were I think close to 300 people there last year haven't sent us snows and it's programs um, 
speakers, you know, just talking about different strategies, techniques, uh, programs uh, that can that um, can be implemented in our rural towns and by our businesses and other organizations. What else do I want to talk about? Okay, so two other things. We're going to talk about data. So this data sheet is one that we bring and do for every town that we go and speak to. We ask to go and talk to all of the towns in Wyndham County. Uh, we do ask for financial support. We ask for folks to put on the town meeting ballot. Some places we have to petition, other places we don't. Um, the purpose of that is to fund a number of the a number of these programs. It helps us leverage those dollars are leveraged at least three times uh, into additional program funds. Um, towns that don't fund still benefit from the programs, uh, <clears throat> but we definitely uh, are looking for that. So we bring this data. We think that having a shared understanding of what is happening in our region helps us all uh, as a rural area um, come up with maybe more cohesive ways of working together or um, ideas on how we can deal with the challenges. So first page, obviously, is um, Wyndham County's population. Uh, you can see uh, Townsend is actually bucking the trend. Uh, and in Vermont, um, you know, we really see that there are two Vermonts when it comes to population. There's Chittenden County, which is growing, and then there's the everybody of else. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, next page here, you can see uh, the areas that are in darker brown are, or orange are areas that are, have been growing. And the areas that are yellow, uh, the lightest colors have been declining in the last, from 2000 to 2017. Um, in some of those areas, there's been some pretty significant declines. There's an article, I don't know if folks are familiar with from Mom Digger, there's an article maybe a month ago about some declines in Southern Vermont. Because Chittenden County has been growing, Southern Vermont has been uh, shrinking. So. <coughs> Sick. Hopefully, this is <laughs> it. Um, <clears throat> the blue map is really the concentration of jobs. Um, we see, uh, probably to no surprise, you know, concentration of jobs in um, manufacturing centers. <clears throat> One of the things that we talk about when we go out uh, is that we, the thing that we do all share in Wyndham County is the workforce. So, your folks work all over the place. Um, folks that are coming here for jobs come from all over the place. And so we've got that shared interest in the size and quality of the workforce, right? Which takes us to this page. Um, this is data. The top circle here uh, tells us that there are 450 people from away that come to work in Windham. Or in Townsend. In Townsend? Yeah. And there are 385 people in Townsend that leave Townsend to go to work. And there are 41 people that live in Townsend and work in Townsend. Now, you know, this will be plus or minus, but you know, we have this data for, you look amused. <laughs> I'm a little stunned there are only 41 people that mm. reside in Townsend that actually work in Townsend. But I was too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it could be off uh, slightly. And if you look at the um, bottom chart, you will see the um, same thing, Wyndham County. We have 10,000 folks that come in to Wyndham County from outside of the county to work. And 7,000 folks that live in the county going out. 12,000 live in and work. Um, next uh, set of charts also really demonstrates the um, shared labor force, right? So when we look at commuting times for your residents, mm -hmm. you know, far and away the average commuting time for your residents is 30 to 34 minutes. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, where your residents work, most residents commute outside of the town for employment. Uh, the majority still work in the county and contribute to the regional economy. Hmm. Most of uh, your total number of businesses, so your businesses, that's the last one. Um, almost 
all of the businesses in Tanzania, one to four employees. It's probably not a surprise to you. Uh, on the next page, again, no surprise. Um, you see education services, healthcare, and social assistance being pretty significant employment um, here in Tanzania. Uh, Construction is second. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, town employment and establishments. Let's see. This is the bottom blue number is the number of uh, businesses over time that you have had in Tanzania, which has been remained pretty steady. Pretty steady. Pretty steady. And the top line is the number of um, uh, employees. And that's grown, while not tremendously. <coughs> It's, it hasn't shrunk, which is actually noteworthy in the mm -hmm. yeah. And then we look at your labor force and your population. So your labor force are those folks that are available for work. Your population are those folks that will be that are not available for work. And we know that this population is getting mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenya is one of the oldest populations. And so that's certainly increasing. Uh, your next is looking at town employment by sector. Uh, and then your 10 wages by sector. Uh, wages here are above the county average but behind the state average. Or this is census data, is that correct? Yes. So 2017, so it'll be repeated. 2020, 2021. So there's annual updates that are estimated with the American yeah. Community Survey. Um, and then we also look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Mm -hmm. We'll also provide information there. Uh, your household income. Let's see. Hmm. That's So we think, you know, we, I don't know if there are other data sets that would be helpful to you. These are the ones that this year we have been showing. We're certainly able to bring additional data sets to you if that would be helpful. Um, and I think that concludes our program. <laughs> <laughs> but we're happy to talk to you about in your, in the folders that you're seeking, that there are a number of different programs that are there, including our annual report, which um, is really has a lot of information about what we're doing. Um, you know, and what the effect is that, we're, that we are. So I also have to, I have to end uh, by saying we would love to see your support. Someone will call up, follow up and say, you know, is it, would you put us on the town meeting warning so that we can come and talk to your voters about that um, voting request? Um, it would probably be difficult for us to petition this year. Um, some, as I said, some towns make us petition, others do not. Um, but regardless, we would like to come to your town meeting, and um, we think that this is an important conversation. We really all need to be in this together. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. that's our approach. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll stop talking. <laughs> all right. Anybody have any questions, comments? Okay. Thank you very much for coming down. We appreciate you taking Thank the time. You. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Hope you feel better, Laura. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
make a motion to pay check warrant number two, <coughs> tax, the amount of four thousand four hundred nineteen dollars and nine cents. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of paying payroll warrant number two in the amount of four thousand four hundred nineteen dollars and nine cents signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Make motion pay check warrant number three, payroll, in the amount of ten thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars fifty-four cents. Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor of paying payroll warrant number three in the amount of ten thousand six hundred thirty-six dollars and fifty-four cents signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number four, payroll tax, the amount of $4,608.35. Second. All those in favor, um, sorry, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of paying payroll tax warrant number four, in the amount of $4,608.35, sigma, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number six out of the general fund in the amount of seventeen thousand ninety-four dollars forty-nine cents. Oh, you, you skipped five. That's on there. Sorry. That's oh, right. Back to what I was saying. Make a <laughs> to pay check warrant number five out of the general fund in the amount of fifteen thousand eight hundred twenty dollars. Twenty and twenty cents. Yeah, $15,820. So. Okay. $15,820. Even? Even. Even. Second. Discussion? All those in favor of paying uh, general fund warrant number five in the amount of $15,820 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number six out of the general fund in the amount of $17,094.49. Second. Discussion? All those hearing none, all those in favor of paying general fund warrant number six in the amount of $17,094.49 signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number seven. <coughs> Out of the highway fund in the amount of ten thousand seventy four dollars ten cents. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying highway warrant number seven in the amount of ten thousand seventy four dollars and ten cents signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number eight out of the equipment fund in the amount of two thousand three hundred and ninety eight dollars and forty four cents. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying equipment warrant number eight in the amount of $2,389.44 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Make a motion to pay check warrant number nine out of the equipment fund in the amount of $179,413. And that Second. is for a brand new Western Star dump. <laughs> Second. Discussion? It's very nice. I was going to say, how's the, how's the truck? Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of paying equipment warrant number nine in the amount of $179,413, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. All right, moving on to uh, reports. Highway? As I mentioned a moment ago, we did receive our new truck last week. <coughs> You'll have to excuse my printer. Oh, that's pretty. Colors are a little off, but that's the picture of the new truck. It's actually red, right? It is red, <laughs> the black body. It was lettered on Saturday, and it Lovely. has been put Very in nice. service. Yay. Also, we're continuing with our ditching work. Currently, we're working on Route 35. We will be continuing our ditching, weather permitting, and uh, we have been working in between storms. But right now, we're in front of Bunny Davis's house working on a corner that seems to be a problem from time to time. That's all I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anybody have anything else on that? 
Um, we do have under here the uh, CentOS Uniform proposal um, and Unifirst. Uh, we have repeatedly tried to get in contact with the Unifirst. Um, they are saying that they have 60 days to respond to any issues that we might have and seem uh, disinclined to allow us to get out of the contract. So that's something that we'll have to um, keep thinking about and discussing and figure out what our options are as far as uh, making that move if we decide to do it. Um, and then moving on, um, everyone should have gotten a copy of the counter report from town clerk. Um, and we can move to the treasurer, Joe. <clears throat> Is that from uh, taxes? Mm. Great. Okay, um, moving on to correspondence. I think everybody got a copy. We got a letter from the um, State Vermont Office of the Attorney General um, forwarded to us uh, by the Vermont League of City and Towns regarding uh, opioid litigation. Um, I will read the first paragraph, which just kind of outlines what they're um, recommending. Uh, Dear Vermont mayors, town managers, and select board members, I am writing to address recent questions arising from a notice inviting Vermont cities and towns to join a negotiation class involving opioid-related opioid litigation. We believe Vermont cities and towns should seriously consider joining the negotiating class because it provides a way to participate in recent efforts to settle ongoing litigation against the manufacturers, distributors, and large pharmacies that created the opioid e epidemic. Uh, the negotiate, negotiation class provides the opportunity to pr participate without having to file a lawsuit, hire attorneys, and incur additional attorney's fees. Vermont cities and towns will be automatically enrolled in the negotiation class unless they opt out by November 22nd, 2019. Um, they give a website to answer questions. It's www.opioidsnegotiationclass dot info slash home slash FAQ. Um, so basically what they're, what they're saying is that we will be automatically enrolled in this clash action suit, which started in um, Northern District of Ohio, I think. Yes, uh, in the United States District Court. Um, so the question is whether or not we want to opt out. So I would um, entertain a motion. Can't have a negative motion. So I guess I would entertain a motion to opt out of the class action suit um, as described in the letter that I just read an excerpt of. And if we don't respond, then we stay in it. <coughs> then we stay in it. Automatically. Yep. I'd make a motion to not respond. Or is that a negative motion? Actually, that can work. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Um, all those in favor of uh, not responding, not taking the action of opting out of the opioid uh, negotiation class lawsuit signify it by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. So we will be involved in the litigation. Okay. Um, another letter of correspondence we got comes to us from the State Department of Housing and Community Development 
Uh, it's addressed to Kathy, select board chair, uh, regarding the village center designation for Townsend Village Center. And it reads, uh, dear Ms. Heggie, congratulations. I'm pleased to inform you that, that at its meeting on October 28th, 2019, the Downtown Development Board found that the Townsend, Townsend Village Center application met the statutory requirements uh, 24 VSA Chapter 76A and designated the Village Center to receive state benefits. The designated Village Center will remain in place for eight years until October 2027. At that time, the town will need to renew its designation. Uh, the Department of Housing and Community Development will send out the renewal reminder six months prior to the renewal date. And their team will check in with the municipality annually to offer support, share updated information, tools, and resources related to the designation, and ensure our local contract information is up to date. Um, and there are a couple of links that they give. Um, this was apparently sent in an email, so they are hyperlinks without actual e email address without addresses. Um, so I'm guessing you can go to the um, vermont.gov and look up the Department of Housing and Community Development to see what that is all about. Um, and we should thank the Planning Commission for their hard work in getting this accomplished. That's great. Okay. Um, this is, I think, just informational. Uh, Chris Medina is the new Director of Operations for Wyndham Central Supervisory Union. Um, we did members of the public. We have no old business. Um, new business. Um, can someone remind me, we have to convene the Board of Health which means that we do not film that. Is that correct, Ian, do you know? Um, my recommendation is that if it's a public meeting and there's no thing, nothing that would go into a executive session, that we would go ahead and film it. Okay. As long as it's an open meeting, uh, I'll, be, I'll keep the camera on. Okay, so then I would um, entertain a motion to suspend the select board meeting and enter into a meeting of the Board of Health. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of suspending the select board meeting and moving into a meeting of the Board of Health, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, so we'll put on our Board of Health hats. Um, <clears throat> there was a um, Dr. Schaefer did do an inspection of the um, residents that we had received the complaint about in the previous, I think it was two meetings ago. Um, he does have a couple of recommendations. He is going to do a second follow-up uh, inspection um, to determine there's an issue uh, surrounding heat. And his first visit just wasn't cold enough to determine if there was uh, recommendation that needed to be made. Um, so I think think we just need to ask Carla to follow up with Dr. Schaefer um, about what needs to be done for him to take action on his recommendations. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that covers that. So I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting of the Board of Health and resume the select board meeting. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of ending the Board of Health meeting and resuming the select board meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next item is the uh, fiscal year 21 health insurance budget costs. <clears throat> so we did get a notification from um, Blue Cross Blue Shield that the insurance rates will be going up. Um, I did come in a little early tonight to work with Carla to see if we could figure out by how much. Fortunately, I think we need a little in more information um, in order to 
make any decision around that. So um, just something to think about as we are coming into budget season. The um, health insurance is calendar year versus fiscal year. So that will roll over on the 1st of January. So we just have to discuss, um, we're gonna keep paying the whole, the whole freight on insurance or if we need to break it up, depending on what the increase is. Um, next up, uh, the Wyndham Central School is that yeah, right? school. Um, has requested the use of the town hall on December 10th for an elementary concert that does fall on a regular meeting night. So, um, Carla, had you gotten in touch with them about how firm mm -hmm. the date is? Well, we left oh. a message with them on Friday uh, asking okay. them to contact us, but we have yet to hear back. Okay. So we will Are wait. They planning to, you, do you know if they're planning to use upstairs or downstairs? Uh, my guess is upstairs, but Kathy said there was no way that we would be able to have the camera rolling with the noise upstairs for select board meeting. Oh, right. Yeah. So we're just okay. asking because them. Because it might be louder than us. <laughs> we have a party going on. We might hate, take clicky pens to a whole new level. <laughs> All right, so I guess we'll um, kind of table that until we hear from them. So we're asking them to reschedule, to consider rescheduling, correct? Okay, thank you. Um, and that seems to be it. Uh, the next meeting actually falls on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Um, so we, and Kathy had wanted to discuss maybe moving it, um, but as we get into budget season as well, it might, we could move it last year, I think, was it last year that you said? We moved it to the week after Thanksgiving, um, which would put us two meetings in a row. You had like a three day cook on the turkey or something? <laughs> I don't know, the, that Tuesday works fine for me. Works um, for me, the 26th. The 20th, okay. So, so we can leave it as is. Great. So the next meeting will be uh, November the 26th at 6.30. Um, does anybody have anything else that they need to bring up, discuss? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Goodbye. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.